Okay. Uh, I think we'll start then. Uh, in, uh, with the, I've said to you of a microphone, but I think this thing here picks us up pretty well. Um, I introduce myself. I'm David Scales, I'm head of tech at Bright Lemon, uh, and I'm going to be taking you through some of the concepts of uh, SAML. Uh, today and Vinny's going to be doing a demo. Um, most of my stuff is, is fairly dry and then you'll get to see some code and things when Vinny starts. Um, I sometimes burp when I'm nervous, so front row, just beware of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's burping, not right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, it's fine. It's, it's, it's just there, but it's, I don't think it's nice. <laughs> yes, you'll be fine there. I, I promise. Okay, so simple sample. This is um, an SSO that we're going to show with Drupal. Um, and as I say, we're going to cover some of the SSO background and the basics of SAML. And then Vinny's going to use the simple SAML PHP repository um, and connect this with Drupal and do a single sign-on between two Drupal instances. So the first thing is single sign-on. Let's figure out what we mean by that, because uh, it can mean different things. But in this case, we're using the same credentials for multiple sites. And we're having an automatic login to federated sites if we're logged into the identity provider already. And an automatic log out across federated sites as well, uh, which is an SLO. Um, because obviously they don't use the initialism SSO for something else. So a few of the single sign-on benefits. Uh, what's good about using single sign-on? Um, well, from an admin and security perspective, uh, you get to maintain central and decoupled sets of data about a user. So you can have a central ID, uh, where really kind of high value stuff, username, password, that sort of thing can be kept central. And then let's say you've got other data in an LMS about kind of what they're, what they're learning about, how far they've got, then we reduce the need to sync that data into the same platform each time. It becomes decoupled. And that avoids duplicating it, which is obviously good for security, and it avoids synchronizing it, so we've got less to do there. Um, we can also uh, restrict and provide access um, to a group of sites uh, really quickly. So let's say we've got 10 federated sites, we set up one user account and then someone can log into that and at the point that they move to one of the other sites that's uh, within the network, their account or the information they need from someone is provisioned just in time for them to use it. So when they go to say an LMS, that's when those details get taken in, not before. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking, but it seems okay. I can't tell if it's working or not. Basically, this, it's a bit different in this room. This microphone just goes to the lecture capture, so it just records on the camera, so it's not actually linked up to the PA in here. Okay. Which is a bit silly, but yeah. Okay. So it is working. So you can see here, there's some levels. Yep. Tap that, so it should be fine. Thanks very much. Okay. It does, there are. Um, okay. So we're just in time for provisioning for these accounts, and from a user's perspective, uh, it means, of course, there's no need to maintain multiple passwords, which is great for all our old brains, and there's less risk with their data, because it's technically in just in one place at one time, and it also protects them from phishing, because they're logging into just one trusted IDP, and they know what that looks like, and of course, once they're logged in, they've got frictionless access between the sites uh, in your network. So... We're talking about SAML, uh, so just a note about kind of uh, where it fits in with other kind of major players of SSO, which would be OR2, which is now OIDC, OpenID Connect, and CAS, Central Authentication Services, which are mainly used in uh, universities, things like that. Um, SAML's pretty old, but SAML's widely supported by off-the-shelf software um, and major software as a service vendors, Google, Salesforce, uh, Amazon as well. Um, and it's estimated that as we kind of kicked off with SAML in 2000, version 2 came about 2005, and now we think somewhere around two-thirds of all SaaS services use SAML or have provision for SAML. And it's interesting, only a third of um, ID providers have no plans for it, so it is sticking around. It's, it's something worth to know, even though I've heard it called the Windows XP of Federation. Um, which isn't a nice thing to call anyone, really. Um, uh, but it's been rated by Gartner and Forrester Research. Um, they say it's going to likely exist alongside OIDC for the next 10 to 15 years. So you are likely to come across it at some point. So what is it? SAML 2, it's 
stands for Security Assertion Markup Language, and it's pronounced SAML, um, similar to URL, or CALL, I suppose, or LL. I don't know. It's an XML-based standard, and um, what does it do? It exchanges information securely. So usually by using an assertion about a user, um, it can then enable security contacts on another website. And it establishes trust between two parties, which are an IDP and an SP. An IDP is an identity provider. Uh, let's say that holds simply your username and password, so it can actually authorize you and say this person is who they say they are. And a service provider is a service that connects to that identity pro provider from another site. And of course, it, in this as well as a user agent, which is you on the browser doing something. And the examples that Vinny's going to show, um, these are pre-configured, so we have certificate swaps between the IDP and the SP, and they're all in the config, in, in the SAML config already. So that's really great for trust that uh, we can control kind of who's allowed to, to use this service. And so what we're going to do with it uh, when we start the demo, uh, we're going to try and return an XML assertion uh, that we can trust. Um, an assertion is probably best described as data returned about something that's true in a, at a point in time. Um, so it, it's just saying, it'll send you something with a timestamp and saying, right now, this is a fact. And I'm a trusted source, so we're backing it up. Um, and we get this by using SAML protocols. The one we're going to use is an authentication request protocol. There are others like a single logout protocol um, or artifact resolution. I'll touch on that later. There are three or four others. Um, and we'll have a binding. So we're binding this request to HTTP post today. Uh, it could be SOAP, it could be something else. Um, and also there's a SAML profile, which is usually uh, a web SSO profile. There are a few others, but you can see how um, with multiple profiles, multiple bindings, multiple protocols, there then turns to be quite a few ways of doing things that you could, that you could string together. Okay, and this is the basic flow of an authentication, oh, an authentication re request. Uh, just well there. Um, I'll run through how this plays out and we'll take a look at the XML as we go. Um, as I said, it's an authentication request protocol. It's bound to post and it's a web SSO profile. So simply put, what's happening here is we've got a user agent that's saying, I want to see something. Can I see this, this target resource? At that point, your service provider, so your, your SP site that, that Vinny will show you, is asking the first question it, it's down to us. Do we have a valid security context to see this? Is this user logged in or is this information freely available? And if the answer is yes, then this is a very short presentation and we skip everything else. But we're going to assume the answer is no. And um, so the service provider then makes a SAML request forwards you to the I identity provider with a SAML request in tow. And that's put on uh, the, the post request and base64 encoded. So what does it look like as it goes over? You can see SAML P is SAML protocol. And you have an authentication request there. Important that we've got an ID because that's going to be used to validate uh, when we get a response. An issue instance so we can tell at what time this was issued by the SP, not by the browser. Um, a destination, so this is essentially the endpoint, the rest point, if you like, that is going to process this information. And the assertion consumer service URL, which is kind of the reciprocal of that at, on the SP. So this is where you're going to send a response. And the response is going to use the configuration for a default SP to process the assertion that you get sent. You could have several methods within the same installation uh, to process that, to send it to different um, ACS URLs. We've got a binding that uh, say is post. Um, I've taken out the digital signature. Uh, that's important. I'll show you that on the next slide. And there's a name ID policy which allows us to create kind of an opaque reference um, to, um, to this request. Um, it basically makes it, you can create something that doesn't really um, mean anything, so it doesn't uh, reveal any personal identifiable information uh, within this part of the request. So it said requests and responses should have a digital signature. We've got one here. I'm not going to go through it, but this is basically certificates um, for, for either server. 
which they're exchanging in the config, so we know who we say we, we know we are who we say we are as it goes through. Okay, so once uh, that request reaches the IDP, um, it's going to say thank you for that, um, and can you please log in? So we'll be presented with a login form, and if the user the user agent logs in, the identity provider is happy, and it's going to respond uh, with an XML form and forward that to forward you to the request assertion consumer service with the, uh, the SAML response in tow. The SP, the service can then read that response, log you in and direct you to your target resource. So at that point you are logged in on your service provider and you're allowed to see it. You have a valid security context because it's been forwarded over to the IP and it has basically vouched for you. It's created a certificate which says yes this person is who the sale are and I am this and so they'll be allowed to log in and see that resource. So a bit more about how that response is made up. Uh, very similar to um, the, the request that went over. We've got where it's from, an issue instance, digital signature goes in there, and all importantly, we've got a status um, that says success in this case, which is great. So the assertion part, which is in the response, Again, this, remember this is something that's true at a point in time, and it's also got information to validate that as well. So we've got the name ID, which is the opaque name, which is around here. Um, and the SP name qualifier, this is the default, it's the name of the server, service provider that we're posting to. And then the subject confirmation. And this is like a bearer token, in fact that's exactly what it is. Um, so we're basically saying here, the bearer, whoever holds this assertion, can give it to this URL in response to the original request um, as long as it's not on or after this time. So that's basically this message will self-destruct in whatever seconds it is till then. And the conditions, extra conditions for that, not before, not on or after, so these all help validate. And we've got an audience, so we know we can only use it on this federated site. And then we've got some information about how the user actually authenticated at the IDP. And we can see that they're authenticated by a password mechanism. So the attributes that come across that are able to then log you in. Uh, this is a Drupal example. So here we've got a UID. We've got a common name, uh, the Drupal name, test user. We've got that email address. And we've got a UUID for them as well, which I think uh, you're using that to key the users at the minute. Um, and then, really usefully, we've got some of their roles, their Drupal roles. So then you can imagine having a, a suite of sites, say five uh, service provider sites, and then managing their roles for from, from within the IDP. So you're, you're kind of um, taking on a, a central sec centralized security role. So then um, the rest of the sites don't need that. And I think that's something that where you can kind of really make use of this kind of login. That is the end of the assertion and uh, the end of the response. And you should be logged in and obviously then you can uh, carry on or log out of um, all sites uh, at once um, with the SAML protocol, which is something that's a little bit more difficult in OIDC, I think. But how can we make it a little bit more secure? Well, there's something uh, you can use a protocol, which is an artifact binding protocol. And this is where some people don't want the assertion passed um, through the browser. So they might want to send that between the IDP and the SP itself with a token for the browser, so that then they can reference it and, and uh, access those details. Uh, another thing we should be doing is using a common or shared time source. So all of the, the time validation um, is working and definitely using HTTPS. I mean, that's pretty much mandatory for this, this sort of thing anyway. Um, you can further encrypt the assertions. So if they are going through the browser, then they can go through encrypted and, and be decrypted at, at the service provider at the other end. And of course, input validation uh, can be very important as well because this is essentially a post form. So, you know, let's not make it vulnerable to injection attacks. Um, and do that in the same way that uh, you'd secure Drupal forms as well. Uh, if you want to play around with some of the stuff that gets back, um, there's a URL here 
um, there's some really great tools on this site um, to just kind of examine uh, the XML and the requests and, and that sort of thing. It's worth having a look at if you want to write it down or I can put it up on the screen at the end. Um, and then I'm going to pass over to Vincenzo, who's actually going to make all of this work, right? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. Thank you a lot for that. Cheers. Thanks, Lee. All right. So, uh, what are, are we going to demonstrate now? I'm going to show you two Drupal websites. Uh, one will work as identity provider, and the second one will work as a service provider. The first one will help all the user, and the second one will use the users from the identity provider. Both of them have been built on Drupal 7.43, which is the latest uh, Drupal 7 release at the time of this presentation. And uh, I'll be using uh, my uh, local Drupal developer environment using uh, Drupal VM, which is a dragon box uh, built with Ansible and is optimized for Drupal. So uh, I'm going to show you now some basic configuration for a simple sample, and uh, I'm going to switch between uh, uh, the slides and PHP Storm and Firefox to show it, uh, all the steps. So. This is my folder structure, so I got the IDP web root, then I got the doc root, where I got, me my, uh, where I got my Drupal installation. Then I got on the same level uh, the simple simul PHP directory, where uh, simple simul PHP is uh, installed. Then I got the WRB folder under simple simul PHP, basically where you can access to the admin panel of simple simul PHP. Same configuration for uh, the service provider. I got the doc root with Drupal, SimpleSemon PHP with the installation of the SimpleSemon PHP, and then the web directory for the admin uh, side of SimpleSemon PHP for the service provider. So, to install the IDP, first of all, of course, we need to run uh, to have Drupal, uh, Drupal installation, so under my doc root directory. And then uh, uh, I will create the SimpleSemon PHP directory and then clone uh, the repo from uh, GitHub and I will check out the latest tag available at the moment. After that, I will start to create my configuration file. Uh, SimpleSemo comes with a, a bunch of uh, templates for configuration and can be found in the directory config templates. So what I will do, I will create uh, uh, another, co temp uh, another uh, directory where I'm going to copy config.php for the config templates and I will pass it into my config directory. From this config.php, I can uh, set up my base URL path, I can set up my admin account for simple sample PHP, I can choose the debug option, I can choose the simple sample PHP functionality, I can then uh, decide what type of session I'm going to use, the cookies and uh, the store type, which is uh, one of the most important parts, and then for more security, I can add an array of trust URLs. So, basically, this is my identity provider. So I got the doc root with Drupal and then simple sample PHP folder. Inside, I got the WL folder for the admin uh, interface. And then I created the config file from the config, uh, sorry, config directory. From the config templates directory, I copy the config PHP and paste it into config folder. And here is my configuration file. So the array contains the base URL path. I can choose which certificate directory I'm going to use. Uh, the log, logs directory, data directory as well. Then uh, I can choose the debug option, the login level too. If I want to show errors uh, and error reporting, of course, it will be uh, false on a production environment. Then uh, I will choose here the admin account and carry on the contact name, the time zone. And here there is plenty of configuration that we can do. Here, I will enable my uh, IDP uh, functionality, so SAML 20 IDP, I will set it through. I got the session uh, options here, the cookie option. So it's quite a long file. <coughs> so another important is the store type. but we have uh, other type of store type. We have a PHP session and SQL. I'm using memcache because Drupal modules require uh, memcache, but you can set up PHP session and SQL. If you add SQL, then you can add your SQL uh, credential uh, after it. And at the end of the file, 
I would have the trusted URL, URL domain um, option array. So after that, I will download the Drupal module. It's not uh, a official module, it's uh, on Google Code. And uh, I will download it into the modules folder of simple SAML PHP. And to enable it, I will create a file called enable inside the Drupal host folder. So basically, on my PHP, on my simple SAML, I have uh, a folder module. I download the Drupal host and enable by creating a file enable. Inside it, I have the lib folder with the authentication source. And here I can choose between external and user password. External, we use the Drupal login, while user password, we will use the simple SAML uh, login interface. So for this demo, I'm gonna use the external one. So on this file, I have the method, Drupal user and password user pass and uh, is calling external. Then I have uh, to choose the Drupal root, uh, the debug option, the uh, Drupal logout URL, the login URL, and then the attribute that I'm going to pass to the service provider. So I got here the field from Drupal, and here I will rename the field uh, in order to pass it to the service provider. So this is the Drupal field, and this will be the name that will arrive to the service provider. So. After that, I will create my outsource PHP file that will contain the, uh, my authentication source. So I will copy that array from the external.php file and I will paste it into outsource. As per config.php, you can find it under config templates directory. You just copy and paste it into the config directory of your simple SAML PHP. So you have here, you have the outsource, you copy, you paste it into the config and then you start the configuration. So you can jump the part with the uh, service provider because this will is gonna be the identity provider. And here you can paste your method. So we have Drupal root, the logout URL, the lo uh, login URL, and then the field that I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass just basic field. All the other fields like role, first name, last name, I'm gonna merge it from a custom module because I want all of them to be in one place. This will be just the basic. I feel that I'm gonna pass. After that, we need to enable the uh, SAML 20-IDP uh, uh, functionality. I've already done it into my config.php. And then I will create the folder metadata and as per config configuration for, for the configuration, I have uh, a metadata template where I can copy files from there. So in this moment, I'm gonna copy SAML 20-idp-host.php and I will paste it into my metadata folder. And inside, I will set the name of the certificate and the authentication method that I'm going to use. So I have my metadata folder here created. Here there are all the templates for the other functionality. So I copy it hosted. And here I set the name of my certificate and uh, the folder has been configured on my config.php. So I have my folder here. And this is the name of the certificate. And then I have the authentication source, authentication source that I'm going to use. So it's Drupal user and pass, and then it will call external. After that, I need to install, uh, I need to run compose and install in order to download uh, package that the simple SAML PHP is going to use. After that, uh, I created the uh, ASIM link on the, the doc root folder, so under the Drupal installation. It's a sim link to the WLB folder, so I can have access to the simple SAML uh, admin interface from my Drupal site. So let's have a look. <coughs> so this is my Drupal site, it's my identity provider. And this is the admin interface for simple SAML PHP. So I have the welcome, I got the link to the documentation, I got the configuration, so it says that uh, I have the SAML 2.0 IDP enabled. I can run some diagnostic if I want. I have here the authentication method. Then I got the federation here, which is the metadata that uh, David was talking before, and you will see later once we saw the service provider. 
After that, I need to one more module. It's Drupal Out SSP, and uh, you can find it inside the same module you installed on the simple SAML PHP. So I go to my module Drupal Out and copy the modules inside that folder and enable it as uh, usual in Drupal and then uh, configure it uh, with the path to the simple SAML PHP and the authentication source. So I go to my Drupal site. Configuration, I found my module, and here is my path to the simple sample PHP installation and uh, the integration source that I'm going to use. After that, we will install the service provider, and uh, we'll do the same thing. So we install Drupal, then we will install uh, simple sample PHP with the same way we installed on the ID, uh, IDP. Same way, we will set up the config.php, we copy it from config templates, we create the config folder, and then we paste it in there and we start to configure it. The outsource will be different. In this case, the outsource will contain uh, the entity ID, the URL of the SP, and uh, the, ad, uh, the URL to the metadata of the identity provider, and then the SSL certificate name. So the difference is that instead of creating an authentication source, I will uh, fill the Drupal, the default service provider array. So I added my private key, the entity ID, so the, C the service provider URL, the IDP uh, option with uh, the URL to the metadata of the simple SAML uh, PHP IDP. Then again, I run Compose Install. I create the sim link from the to, uh, to from the doc root to the WW folder of um, uh, the service provider, and that will be accessible in the same way as the identity provider. So, this is my service provider. And I have the same thing, but on federation, I have just the metadata for the uh, the metadata for the service provider while in the IDP, I can say it can be a service provider or identity provider for both of them. After that, I will install the Drupal module uh, to enable the service provider functionality on a Drupal site. And uh, this is a project uh, host on uh, Drupal.org, so it can be found under project um, uh, path. So we have the simple sample PHP out, we enable and we configure it. From here, we can map uh, some files and uh, then we can set up some other option that I'm going to show you now. So I will log in as admin. And the configuration, I have my option here. So again, I get the directory, I get the authentication source, which is the default SP. I will force HTTPS on login, and then I will map my basic um, fields. So I have uh, DCN for the username, the UID, as unique identifier for both uh, simple SAML PHP, IDP, and uh, service provider, and then the mail. And then here is for the role, but for the role I would, like, I would prefer to use it, the custom module in order like, to have everything extra in uh, just in one module and add some PHP and some uh, checking that we can do. Then we can register the user. It means that if the user doesn't exist uh, on the site, it will automatically uh, create it. And then for the authentication, we can choose to set the, their own password on the service provider, but uh, I like to leave it like this and manage the, um, the, uh, the account from just one source, from the IDP. And then we can choose which role can log in or which uh, just from uh, user ID in here. And then we can specify logout URL. Now, both of them are ready, so we need just to let them know each other. So we need to exchange the metadata from the IDP to the SP. So first of all, we're gonna put the IDP metadata into the service provider. So what we'll do, we create the metadata director, directory in the service provider. From the metadata templates directory, we will copy SAML20 IDP remote 
which means that uh, the IDP is uh, uh, located remotely. And then we will go to the simple SAML uh, IDP uh, admin interface. We'll copy the uh, metadata and we'll paste it into this file. So let's show, we'll go here. We go to simple SAML PHP. So this will be the metadata of my identity provider. So we have the XML format, and we also have the flat format. I'm going to use the flat format for this presentation. And here I have the certification, the certificate is going to be passed. So I will copy this part here, and then I will paste it into the metadata of the service provider and inside the files of RDP remote. And I will paste it into here, the same file. So basically what I did, I went into the service provider, ID, uh, sorry, identity provider, copied the metadata, went back to the service provider, and pasted it into the SAML IDP remote files. Same thing we'll do, I will do for the identity provider. So I will go to the service provider at the interface, I will copy the service provider metadata, and I will paste it into uh, the same file with a different name, so it will be the SP remote file into the identity provider. So I will go to my services provider, simple SAML, federate, show metadata. Again, I will copy the metadata from here and paste it into the metadata SP remote file in the identity provider. So now I have the metadata of the identity provider in the service provider and the service provider metadata into the identity provider. So now it's time to try it, to test it. So I will go to the service provider. I will click on login. And at this point I will be redirected to the Drupal IDP login page. Login page. I will fill the log login form, press login. I will be logged in both sites. on login so, so this is my identity provider this is my service provider I will click on login I will be redirect to the identity provider in the username password click on login and here I'm logged in one, but not in the other one. Ah, uh, no, sorry. Yeah, I was logged, just the, uh, I couldn't see it here. Because, yeah, yeah, the, the screen is just like, uh, I couldn't see it here, but here, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, basically the screen is just, it's just better, and I couldn't see the, <laughs> basically I couldn't see the, uh, my account and log out, so I was like, what? <laughs> So it did work. Yeah, it did work. Yeah. So <laughs> I can redo it. I can redo it. <laughs> I haven't finished yet. <laughs> so basically, now uh, I'm logged in. Ah, uh, yes. Why, why do you have login time there? Hmm? You have the login time. Ah, uh, these are just created uh, as a menu. Is uh, uh, I just created the menu here. I didn't put like I said, it is logged. Just don't show. So, um, but I have my account in here. So on my service provider, if I click on my account, I have patient in here, and if I go to my service provider, I'm logged as well, the same. And now for from any of them, if I click on logout, I will be logged out from the SP, from the IDP, and just to make sure, yeah, from both of them, I'm logged out. So if you want to add more fields on uh, creation, you can use the hook pre-save, user pre-save, and then you have the global uh, simple SAML PHP host SAML attribute that you can use, and then from there you can grab uh, all the fields, and uh, of course, as I said before, you can name it from the, uh, cons from the outsource of the IDP, and the attributes you can add all the fields you want here to be brought from the IDP to the service provider. 
if you want uh, to update uh, the fields from uh, on login, you can use the uh, module, uh, the view user login, and uh, use the same um, uh, the same variable to the same function to get uh, the attributes of the user. Here there is some link that you can use. So I go to simple simple PHP link, uh, the GitHub link, documentation, IDP configuration, SP configuration, Drupal module for SP, a Drupal module for the IDP in here, and then the Drupal VM. It's finished. Um, quite often it's like Jupyter's Drupal uh, integrations using yes. stuff like uh, Active Directory and things yeah. like that. Um, have you kind of had any experience with using Active Directory? Uh, no, we use, uh, we have an integration with uh, Moodle, so we had uh, the same configuration, so we have the ADP, it was Drupal, and then the service provider was Moodle. So we were getting the user from the from Drupal site, and we were importing, we will, uh, we are importing it into Moodle. So we have this single sign-on between two but sites. Yeah, Active Directory and LDAP are pretty common. I mean, it, it, they do say that like SAML is essentially like authentication agnostic, mm. if you like. So it's it, you know just that you can even put OIDC in there if you need to. Um, so yeah, LDAP and Active Directory are both yeah easy to do if you if you've got access to um, those components. Oh, they are similar. They are the same. Exactly. Uh, it's, it's up to you then, but uh, really, uh, I keep the same. So, for example, I you always have the base URL path. Uh, you need to give the certificate directory, uh, then the debug option, uh, and then again the technical name and the admin name. The only difference is that uh, uh, in the um, service provider, you will not enable any of this. You will not enable any of this because it's for the uh, NT provider apart from the uh, VSPED mm. service provider. So it will be, this would be fault, uh, false on mine, but then the, the everything will be the same, unless you have different uh, folder structure. So the ship stuff yeah. there would probably yeah. And uh, yes, and the store type would be, um, would be uh, memcache as well. So that's why I'm using Memcache here. <laughs> or you can use even use SQL and then map the database and down here. Yes. Um, I was just trying to follow all the steps. <coughs> and I think just the main steps, the main minor steps. Mm -hmm. Can we also make this use make make files or create tracing or do we always have to go all the minor steps? Uh, we cannot use make file uh, as like Rush does because it uh, is not Drupal uh, type, the simple sample PHP uh, bit. Uh, you can uh, have set the configuration, same for uh, both of them, but usually you pre-configure it. Uh, you have the IDP configuration, then you can use the service provider configuration across uh, all the other sites. Talk about all these git clone here, git clone from code.com, mm -hmm. just main things they have to do manually. It's not mm -hmm. very practical, you have to work and yeah, deliver. You can have uh, your own repo for simple SAML with your basic configuration for the service provider, for example. And then when you need to speed up a new one, you just clone mm -hmm. your own repo, and from there you will start. Mm -hmm. so you can so have those repos to, you know, compose the JSON. Yeah, can you yeah. use that way. Compose it and build all these. Yeah, you could. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah I'm using already Composer. Yeah, yeah, I'm using Composer to uh, download yeah, some files. Yeah, you have to do Composer twice to do things, but before you do Composer, you have to do some manual download. Uh, yes, yes. Mm. You cannot yeah. use Composer, it's just a dependency, you get the thing downloaded for you. Yeah, you could add those, the VTS yeah. repository. Is that, is that yeah. how you work? Uh, you could do that, yeah. Yes. No, no, we, ju we just downloaded from uh, Git uh, for both of them. Yeah. We just did like this, okay. yeah. Um, but you can have... On the link to the last page, if I, if I see them, will yeah. I see these things with the pre-configured Composer things are... Uh, you don't have this at all? No, uh, no, no, no. no you can uh, find those, uh, the IDP configuration and the basic SP configuration, and then you can find the instruction on those links as well, and it uh, will be the exactly the same uh, configuration as I've done here, but not the composer.
uh, when uh, you first log in and your the user is not uh, in the um, uh, on, on the SP, it will create the user and will pass all the field and will map it to the right. other. What if the user is already there and was updated on the service provider, but not on the, uh, the identity provider? Uh, from the SP to the IDP will be automatically, so you can do it. Uh, from the IDP, you can create the user login and get data from there. But what, what you can do is just force all the, all the users to go to the identity provider edit uh, page of their account. Uh, so it will be central. Yes, sorry. There's also something in, in the Drupal module to force re-evaluation of the roles every time somebody logs in. There's roles have changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they see you get new roles. So it's difficult. A question that I want to ask other people. Uh, has, has anybody got experience with other open source IDPs? Um, using Drupal as an IDP, it's not a, it's not a custom bit. No, from here is uh, when you log in on the service provider, it will call the uh, attribute from the identity provider. I will update on the service provider. So yeah. Yeah. That's not how automatic on OAuth. You mm -hmm. have actually have to uh, do this manually, but I guess it depends on, on uh, the client libraries that you're using. I made an integration between NodeDB, uh, a node-based forum, Anymore. I think from there there was someone. Did you have a question? I, I had a question about um, so managing uh, separate uh, IDPs. So mm. you might have a test on it and a production one. Mm. And managing all of your code in one thing. You don't have to keep switching libraries between versions. Is there any way you can handle different? I created a file, uh, local settings, uh, PHP, as a not, uh, I took it out from the Git uh, repo, and in there, then I do a check uh, to see which one, which IDP I am, and then from there, I can then set the variables and everything. So, I don't, I don't do static uh, uh, values in the config PHP for the one that are changing between IDP and SP. We haven't tried on multi-site installation, and uh, we use just on Drupal 7. Uh, this, uh, because the the model of the IDP uh, is uh, on um, is on Google Code, and uh, the other one for BSP uh, is uh, is on Drupal.org. And uh, I don't think there is. Uh, not sure if there is a version for. Yeah, there is an alpha version for Drupal 8. So, but then it, will, it needs to be written the, the one for the IDP. The choice of this discussion in more detail. Could, could you possibly do, could the Postman site possibly be both uh, an identity provider and a service provider? Can we, we would be able to use it on, uh, on a multi-site installation yeah. as long as we have these <laughs> different things? Yeah. So you're saying the, the, the site would be the service for that site would send it to itself as an IDP. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. certainly would be more stable than using the shared tables. Mm. Yeah. So it might be actually a good solution for multi sites. Yeah.
Yeah, basically I will share the slides and uh, also I will create a repo on my GitHub account and uh, I will upload the, the same environment as well. Great. Uh, yeah, and it's just to, to do some security thing, to cut my name and my emails from the, from yeah. the repository and then I will. Yeah. So on my GitHub, 